Matt Jeevil. We're playing Casual Truck today. With me is Chuck again. Chuck, it's always a pleasure. Hello, everybody. And today's question is, are human teeth just seeds for other humans that you can plant into the ground? Chuck, any thoughts on this? Human teeth? Uh, maybe? For people, for people who don't know, every time I start one of these shows, I give the guest an option to listen to the question before I start the show. Chuck always says no. I bet he <laughs> wish he did now. <laughs> <laughs> It just occurred to me today, because some guy was sprinkling human teeth on my front lawn. That didn't actually happen. But it did up here, in my head. I need help. You know, I was on Reddit earlier, and they were talking about some kid in India. Um, and they had some disorder where their jaw is just constantly producing teeth. Huh? Yeah. Um, they... The kid's like 17 now and could finally afford the surgery, and they removed like 200 and something miniature teeth out of his skull. That is awesome! And I know, like, really tragic or whatever, but... Well, he didn't seem to enjoy it at all. I can't imagine people would enjoy having tons of teeth. Because, yeah, I mean, and, it and crowds the... around, but... I mean, they weren't all growing out of the same place. Like, they were just popping out all over his lower jaw. So he was in a lot of pain and, and whatever. Um, but by your definition, he is now, you know, father of like 275 tooth babies. Tooth babies. Maybe that's what the tooth fairy is. It's like the, uh, the twisted version of the stork. Oh my god, what if the tooth fairy is the stork? I think, I think we may have stumbled onto a conspiracy here. No, I thought the Tooth Fairy was a uh, Kesha. What? Wait, no, wait, back. Whoa, holy crap! Hang on, Queenie just put a huge plate of delicious food in front of me. Thank you, Queenie. <laughs> no, you didn't know about that. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I've got two two things that I'm paying attention to here. Delicious <laughs> food that is directly in front of me. She brought me a, a cheesesteak minus cheese and potato chips. And Kesha is the tooth fairy, which may be collecting teeth to implant into women in order to bring them babies. No, no. Kesha collects teeth from her fans. They send her thousands and thousands of teeth, and she makes stuff out of them. Like, she made a tiara out of people's teeth. And I think she made a bra out of teeth. Okay, Kesha has just fucking gone up a couple of notches in my respect on meter So now she is merely reviled. Yeah, there, there was some big story on the news a while back that she was in rehab. And, of course, when you're in rehab, they encourage you to do art. <laughs> and, and the rehab was receiving dozens of envelopes full of fans' teeth for her to turn into art, and the rehab said, I'm sorry, this is a biohazard, what? and also wrong for so many reasons. We're is not going to give her these teeth. What is, what is, and a lot of fans were really mad. Yeah, I'd be mad too! Those are my teeth! <laughs> what the? <laughs> I can't get over it! <laughs> You'll have to look it up, because they're... I mean, I, I can't right now, because I'm on Skype, but... If you go to Google Images and type in, you know, Kesha Tooth Art or whatever, you're going to get some crazy stuff. That is the most awesome thing I've ever heard, and I can't believe it's related to Kesha, who actually looks like human garbage juice. Well, I, I do not like any of her music, period. But she is a very, very talented artist and songwriter. Um, she basically just adopted the crazy persona to sell records but she's a classically trained pianist and all sorts of stuff like really super talented she just she realized if she acts like garbage she'll make millions so she does well she needs to take the the 
less crazy route and make a living off of human teeth. Oh man, I never knew that. That's awesome. Well, well she wouldn't make a living off of doing it because she never sells her art. Okay. Uh, she, she keeps all the teeth. She just wears them on occasion. I'm, I'm telling you, you what, what could probably happen is uh, after she dies, which she will die. Well, yeah, um, probably from some tooth-related illness. Th there, there's going to be people... Well, I mean, if she cleans the teeth, it'll be, probably be okay. You can you can do that. That's what I did with mine. Um, that artwork is going to go for, like, millions. Because mm. artists always... Their, their work is always more valuable after the artist is dead. I never... God, that is so cool. How did I not hear about that? I, don't, mm. I was in a doctor's waiting room and it was on the Today Show or whatever. <laughs> so. Uh. And and I don't want your listeners to think that I am hip on celebrity gossip because I am not. You just happened to mention teeth. And it's like, oh, I know this really messed up thing about teeth. There you go. I'm not sure that being hip on... Oh, but don't say hip. Only old people use the word hip. I am old. You were born an 80-year-old man. Yep. I am uh, currently Benjamin buttoning my way through life. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> but, uh, no. I don't know if there's a stigma with knowing celebrity gossip. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's something that you can stigmatize. It is. Um, just, it is. When I think of somebody who knows a lot about celebrity gossip, I think of someone who thinks and behaves like Perez Hilton. Paris Hilton? No. Perez Hilton. The celebrity gossip blog keep... Man, I should not know this. I don't know this. What are you talking it's, about? It's a guy who runs a blog on celebrity gossip and... He's like the guy that's always being quoted on the news for celebrity gossip. I don't know how to explain it any better. He's like TMZ, except he's one guy and he runs a blog. Oh. Any, he is not Paris Hilton. Any relation? I don't think so. I've, I've never heard of this guy. Well, there's also the whole deal of, okay, I know I'm pretentious. I know I can be really pretentious. And Queenie oh, you're calls not pretentious. me You're Queenie. not pretentious at all. You, you just think you're better than everyone else. I'm not better than everyone else. I'm just better cultured. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. ooh, potato chips. Speaking of culture, but I don't watch celebrity news because I don't really think it's my business, so I don't fucking care. Like, I have enough trouble with my own life. Well, and, um... But I understand are... why people would do it. I don't attach a stigma to people watching celebrity news or keeping in touch mostly because it's like soap opera you know if that's if, why people love it yeah so uh here's here's a philosophical question for you sure okay does a person becoming famous exempt them from privacy Many people in this country believe that if you go the route of becoming rich and famous, you have officially waived your right to privacy. You no longer, you know, you deserve to have the paparazzi follow you because that's one of the things you accepted when you chose to become wealthy and famous. Okay. Um, the celebrities, people... of course, don't feel that way. They feel who, like they should have the same rights as any non-famous person. Okay, let's back up a second. Um, I don't believe... Oh, Maximilian leveled up. I gotta check on him. I don't believe that people who are wealthy are also famous, because there are famous people who are not wealthy. Oh my god, you, you leveled up your, your long distance all the way. Very good. I agree. I agree that there are famous people that are not rich. But there are very few rich people who are not famous. I mean, even lottery winners become famous because they won the lottery. Kind of. I honestly don't know any 
lottery winners, not personally or otherwise. I can't think of the names of any lottery winners. Okay, just because you don't know that a person is famous, whether or not you know a person does not negate or qualify their, their famousness. You realize that, right? All right, well, what does qualify as famous? How many people need to know your name before you are famous? Um... That's a very good question. And I'm not talking about specifics. I'm not going to do the, the pile of beans question, which I don't know if you know that. It's a, basically, the trying to find the exact number for a vague idea, like pile. Well, famous can... I mean, like, how famous? I mean, I'm famous, but only, like, 30 people know who I am. Mm. But I, I am public. Does that... Is that what it actually means? Because I, I don't have... Like, I put stuff out in the public. I have a webcomic that I do. I have a, a series of videos that I put up on the internet. I, I wouldn't call you famous. Okay. Um, I wouldn't call you famous because there's a lot of people on YouTube who put out a lot of content who are not necessarily famous. Putting out the content doesn't make you famous. Um, that's interesting. I was about to say it's the number of people that seek out your content that make you famous, but that's not true, because Donald Trump is famous, and no one is seeking Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm sure Donald Trump has his fans. Yes, but Donald Trump is, is more thrust upon people. But he is still just as famous as somebody like Lady Gaga that people actively seek out their music. Kind of um, like, uh, kind of like the way Justin Bieber is now. And and there are different kinds of fame. Well, um, there's infamous, which I believe is actually the same thing. Fame. Infamous is not the same thing as famous. It kind of is. It isn't. You're infamous if you're famous because of some terrible thing you did. Okay, you're saying that infamy is not the same thing as famousness because infamy is famousness about... Wait, what? How can you include famousness in the definition of infamy and it not be famous? They're two different things. All right. All right. Hey, there's Osfart. <laughs> Another one. I can't get away from the signs now. I keep looking around the map for Osfart. Sorry, was really distracted. I'm terribly sorry I did not mean it. Okay, back back to fame. It's okay. I'm I am done talking about fame because <laughs> because reasons. Um alright. We can talk about other things. The weather. Old flames that have broken our hearts. Uh fame. The Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> the Matrix. Um, I really liked The Matrix. I um, liked the first movie, and I liked The Animatrix. I liked it a lot. I am the only person who liked the other two Matrix movies. Um, I also really liked the video game. Even though it is horribly, horribly dated, um, the story is really good. I'll, I'll tell you, you can tell me about the story here in a second. I'm going to tell you or no, I, I will tell you here in a second about the MMO because the MMO had an interesting ending. What was the story of the Matrix video game? Because I, I never paid attention to it and I haven't seen any Let's Plays of it. Mm, give me a second to think about it. I remember it being awesome. I'm not remembering the specifics. I want to say it was about like a totally different group of people. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, no, that's right. It was it was still the main cast, but the story was about uh, two or three of the side characters that you never met in the movie. Like, one of them was named uh, Ghost, and I can't remember the name of the other one. But it was basically, like, they had side missions going on that if they were unsuccessful, then... Neo and his group of ragtag freedom fighters would have also been unsuccessful. Like it, you know, a domino effect sort of thing. Okay. Um, and it was really well written. It was written by the Wachowskis, for one. 
Um, and it came out before the terrible second and third movies that ruined the franchise forever. At least I think that's the case. I could be wrong about that again. I said I can't. I would pull it up on Wikipedia if I could, but. Yeah, I know your your laptop can only handle so much. Yeah. I will be getting a new laptop one of these years. I, I need a new desktop too. So, all right, here's the deal. The MMO for The Matrix came out and it flopped. All right? It flopped terribly. Nobody played it. And the people who did play it constantly complained about bugs, which is kind of ironic. Bugs. Bugs everywhere. Well, the guys who ran the MMO servers did something kind of cool. And it, I guess it, it, it would not have worked in any other game than The Matrix. They realized, okay, we are going to have to shut down our servers, and that's that. We worked so hard on this game, but hey, it flopped. We'll just take that information. We'll, we'll work on the next game. You know, they, they were really cool about it. We're like, oh, you know, we don't blame the players for not buying our game. So, as their calling card, as their, their uh, uh, not calling card, as their, their swan song, what they did is every day they would revert the version of the games backwards so that all the glitches would show up more and more. That's how I understood it. I wasn't there for it. I kind of wish I was. But the, uh, the servers and the game itself became more and more glitchy until the day they shut the server down. Hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty kind of classy, and you wouldn't be able to do that with, like, say, World of Warcraft. First off, because it would take for fucking ever, but... I just, that's just really neat. And we got here from a stream of consciousness of human teeth. I like brainstorming with you. Yeah, Even though fun. science has proven that brainstorming is not very effective. Um, I still enjoy it. Well, you just gotta use it for the right thing. Brainstorming is probably not a good analytical form. And I have made my delivery and got 10,000 uh, pounds from it. I keep trying to say euros. It's not euros, it's British pounds. And how much did you lose in speeding tickets? Um, you know, like 11,000. And I got 0% damage in my stuff. Everything's really cool. My, uh, my employees are doing well. I've already been to this town, so I don't need to, I don't need to do anything else here. This will probably be the next town that I uh, put stuff in. I've tried to open up my, my franchises of truck drivers around Europe. I try to open them up at the edge of the map. Because that forces them... That forces all of my drivers to go further and further away from their headquarters. Which means that they have to... They get more and more money that way. Because short trips don't make you any money at all. But long trips, they make you the big bucks. And it also, since they travel further, they get experience faster. Alright, well... That's, that's pretty much it for this episode of Casual Truck. We've learned a lot today. We've learned that Kesha makes things out of human teeth. We've learned that the Matrix uh, got glitchy going backwards, and uh, even though the last two movies sucked balls, they were still fun to watch. At least I no, learned that. No, they weren't. Yes, yes, they were. Come on, how many times do you get to see uh, Theodore Logan save the world a couple of times in a row. Although I did wonder, you know that last battle with with Agent Smith? Why didn't all the others join in? Hmm. It was a... And you know what? I'm not even going to justify it further by talking about it. Alright. Well, goodbye everyone. Say goodbye, They didn't Chuck. happen. They were <laughs> non-movies. They were non-movies. Goodbye. They'd... Goodbye. <laughs> hey there. Do you got Skype? Do you want to be on the show? Send me a message at natchevil at gmail.com. 
Also, if you have any funny screenshots of uh, Euro Trucker, go ahead and send them my way. I'm going to use them as titles for the show or whatever. I might credit you. I haven't decided. See you later. <laughs>